Hi guys, hope everyone is doing well. Happy Sunday. Hope you've all had a good week. Enjoying the weekend. Let's have a look over some charts uh, as some of these big levels are still in play. Thank you very much as well for the birthday messages on Monday. It means uh, a lot to me. Let's get stuck in then. We'll start as usual going one by one through the, the markets and obviously if you look in the comments or just above the comment section there, they will be time stamped uh, as well so you can just flick through to the ones of interest. Euro, I mean these are daily candles now that we're looking at um, and it hasn't, I mean looking at this, done too much has it? It's above and you can see here our line in the sand that we had from two weeks ago. Um, but unfortunately last weekend I wasn't able to do this video but uh, you can see I'm doing it now a bit earlier I've got football uh, in a couple of hours so I thought I'd get it out of the way now rather than uh, later when I'm most likely going to be injured anyway we're above this area this line in the sand which really dictates play for me between the 117s and the 119s so above there you, you'd argue we're perhaps likely to get a bit of a push on However, with the euro, we're, we're still bang on this trend line, albeit tiny bit above. Uh, of course, you would want to see a bigger break before committing to any longs. But I would say, you know, looking at this, it wouldn't be ultimately too surprising to see another test of that triple top to make it four. And then if that happens, that's when you can get potentially that final push higher. One thing of note, though, is the month that we're in it is starting to feel certainly on some days and sessions that it is summer market season and the volume is drying out a bit certainly in effects can we get a big technical push above a multi-year trend line in these conditions potentially i would you know just argue maybe not though um however it would be interesting to see can we get another test of that i'd still have the line in the sand on the futures at 118s uh, and then the bottom part of that range which we tested a couple of times uh, before testing it again last week I'd have that as the bottom so the levels above and below where we're trading you can see I haven't had to adjust them now for two weeks and, and that really sums certainly the euro dollar up so therefore to the downside the levels stay the same above where we're trading I guess this is when you know you are going to want to really scoop back the chart and you're looking at some of the highs going back here to May 2018 uh, and that really takes us to sort of the 120 handle and then the big level that I think people will uh, obviously pay attention to is just a bit above that at 121. Some people uh, are thinking at some point, like Alex, I'm sure you've uh, seen his calls, thinking 125 comes which is obviously these highs that we had from late uh, 2017. Uh, or I should say early 2018. So they're not a million miles away, and especially if we get a break above that weekly trend line, you can see maybe there is a bit of free room for it to go. Uh, I'll just be careful about thinking it's going to happen in one explosive uh, week, for uh, example. But yeah, to the downside, obviously we've got these highs that haven't quite been retested yet. I still think, you know, if we if we get a strong rejection again of this, weekly trend line or maybe we would false break the uh, the highs uh, then people will be on high alert and below 117 I think 115 you can see here which we had that sort of the high from the 9th of March people will be identifying that and for the bulls it looks like a great place to reload up for the long moving on swiftly to the pound again levels not touched tested uh, as a touch sorry uh, since two weeks ago and you can see I mean you probably would I mean you probably want to move the 130 39 area but other than that to the upside you're not changing anything again this is August this is halfway through it's it's slow isn't it and um, the fact that in 14 days I haven't had to or should I say 10 days of trading had to change any of my levels speaks volumes here uh, not because they're great levels, but because the market hasn't really pushed on higher or lower from then. Um, to the upside of this, obviously 133s uh, will be of note, and then you've got a couple of higher levels going back to really the election on the 12th uh, of December, obviously in early hours, uh, 13th, we did get up to 135 on the futures there. So keep a watch on that 
Um, to a closer upside, obviously the 132 handle will be one that people keep an eye on there. It's a double top as well uh, from recent trade, but also going back from 9th of March, which of course was that Euro 9th of March. So a lot of uh, attention will be around that similar level uh, in the Euro, uh, potentially at some point. Uh, the longer term weekly uh, trend line, another rejection of that. Looking at it on the weekly, you, you sort of will have this area marked up at 127.47, which is the high from the 10th, uh, oh sorry, the, not the 10th of June, the, the 9th of July, that people will sort of have that on the on the week, uh, and I guess maybe a tiny bit higher, but more of a zone there. People will be identifying that either as a place to get long should we start pushing down or the continuation of the downside if this rejects it. Um, so yeah, big, big rejection again last week on the weekly candles, one, two, three times it's hit that zone and come back down. How key is that going to be? I'd favour, you know, we actually come back down to the 130 handle, not a massive move, only 80 pips or so, but that is when it is decision point. That is when the bulls and bears are going to go to battle. Uh, above 132, that's when this whole view is, is wrong. Uh, and a daily close above that trend line that could lead to a weekly would then start to see a push higher. The only issue that maybe we're going to have is these markets can't go down while equities are going up and equities are continuing to go up, albeit uh, in a bit of a choppy fashion as of late. Uh, Aussie dollar, moving on. Um, these are the levels, hopefully it loads up, but you can see. So we've got a bit of a, a push higher. Uh, we did get a break above the... 72 15s which is the first time you can see we've got above there since 17th of april 2019 is a big level actually and i think that sort of false break would have potentially caught a couple of people out to be completely honest um but yeah we're back into the zone let me just remove that uh, ellipse if we do come back down uh, i'm just going to remove the rectangles here this would be an area where I think people are certainly going to be eyeing up a you know, key key defence of this this up would trend up a direction that we've had on on the Aussie dollar. So keep a watch. Should we at all come back to test that on the uh, the longer time frame? You can see similar to the pound, isn't it? In that you've got this uh, another test of this, I guess, in the euro as well. All currency pairs. That's right on this very very key. Uh, you know. Just point. So on the daily, it hasn't really done too much. It's making a decision. Something's got to go. Is it going to be the close above this area on the week, or is it going to be a rejection and actually we start to come back below these two highs that we had? And on the daily chart, what does that look like? Well, you can see around that sort of seventy thirty eight level. Is it seventy thirty eight seventy forty five around? our zone that we got here so that's going to be the key decision whether we can get there uh, to the downside this week without equities coming under pressure i'm not too sure but that's going to be huge and then obviously above the highs and more importantly just keep an eye on your weekly trend lines here that's when people start thinking well actually can we now get a push towards the 7387 which is still a decent size move you can see around here going back to 2018 levels December. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the currency pairs just got to factor in the, the date, the summer sort of season, our weekly trend lines uh, and also the lines in the sand which would be very important for whether price can you know, push to the downside or continue to push to the upside. I don't think there's much harm if you're not in a dollar related pair to, to hold off and wait for a break either way if you got caught out in that Aussie obviously just be aware of that weekly trend line uh, like I said I do think people would have got caught there uh, but if your stocks are tight uh, it probably was not uh, the worst trade in the world moving on equities which I've said have, have grinded higher in the, the couple of weeks that we haven't done the uh, the video um, solid support that we got down uh, 3200 we then broke through a very key zone um, that we had marked up here and we can see we just confirmed the push above it ever since so we broke above rejected the lows rejected the lows one two three four times 
uh, just shows how key that level is. Uh, however, if we just get a little horizontal line on the last few days worth of price action, you've got one, two, three, four, quadruple top. Now that's either looking to coil up and, and smash through, or it's just showing kind of similar price action to what we saw on the last all-time high, and that we just can't keep pushing on and eventually we come down. To be honest, guys, it would be healthy for a little correction, wouldn't it? Um, I think people are going to load up if it was to come, say, 32.84. It's also uh, the moving average here that people will be looking at. And we just confirm what moving average it is, the 21. I know that's good in the NASDAQ, uh, but people will be looking at that on the S&P as well. So just going to change a couple of these levels just to make it a bit cleaner. Oh, don't know what I clicked there. While well, that just sort of loads up. Um, I would just, there we go. I would just have this level as the, the area I think people are going to load up from, around 32.84. Obviously, your price action, you want to see what you want to see before committing to that trade. Uh, and also keep an eye on 33.21. The all time high is in touch and distance, uh, 33.99, and it's actually three quarters uh, on that. Uh, but yeah, a break above there, then, you know, where does it go to? That's when you know you start maybe looking at some trend lines coming up from these levels or your fib extensions. Um, but yeah, I think for equities, you're going to have you know a dart at the all time. There's no guarantee that it pushes on, and actually, I think the the next trade to add to it on that continuation is still you know a long period away of, of when we can get through. We can then come back. So it will come back, in my opinion, to test it whether it holds straight away or not before that next leg higher. So. We're still a few weeks away, I believe, from uh, the next really good opportunity on a continuation higher. If we do push lower, you know, these highlighted areas and rectangles are all points where, for now, I'd consider adding to it. One market that hadn't had trouble with an all-time high was the NASDAQ. However, um, last sort of week or so, it had a bit of a struggle. I'll say last week, had a bit of a struggle trying to reclaim it. Um, you can see the trend channel still intact the 21 day moving average is still something people look at and the the bottom part here uh, of that trend matches up with a nice area uh, which was also i'm gonna say it was a previous sort of all time high yeah around here on the, the 9th of july good sort of line in the sand that people are looking at uh, and the previous all-time high sorry this is the level i was thinking of here which again not adjusted from 10 or, or two weeks ago, 10 trading days ago, uh, the previous all-time high that we had on the 13th of July. That's going to be pretty key by looking at this uh, for, for a bit of a guide. 21 day moving average, trend line in there, area support around 10,780. Uh, there's a, quite a few areas that the balls will have a chance to defend if we do push lower. To the upside, the new all-time high is similar to the S&P in that one, two, three, Four rejections last week. Uh, however, that's obviously no guarantee. We definitely pushed lower, but as a bull, we probably would have wanted to see uh, price action on Friday finish a tiny bit higher. Do we come under a bit of pressure uh, on the open? We'll have to wait and see. It's still early in the weekend, really, uh, to have a look at those weekend markets. Dow Jones had a good rally uh, over the last two weeks. Yes, it stalled like the other equities did as well, but we came up to this such key level here, 28,127, before the big breakdown that we got on the 24th, on that Monday and Tuesday in February, 24th and 25th. So we hit that level, we then find support back on the 9th of July, 9th of June high. Keep a watch, should we come back to our next level? I mean, I haven't edited this, I'm not going to edit it either, looking at this. Trend line, previous area of resistance around 27,093, uh, if, 27827 doesn't hold on the push to the upside if we get above this zone that's when uh, you're going to see more tweets from donald trump as we approach new all-time highs i'd say that um, it's not a great it's not a massive call it's not a brave call but the dow in my opinion is going to be on all-time highs uh, before the election if not on the election uh, as well as it continues to push on so just some areas of interest to be aware of if that comes comes sooner rather than later this breakdown point here on the Friday of the 21st of Feb, so that gap will be of interest. And then of course, the all time high. To the downside, when this view is wrong, trend line has to go, this level has to go, 
Um, but then, of course, the 31st of July could well still be a point where people look to sort of load up uh, as well as would be the 29th of June low. So, yeah, Dow, um, S&P and NASDAQ, while they stalled over the last sort of back end to that week, they're still in pretty good nick, I would have to say, going forward. Gold uh, obviously had a, a massive push lower. It's uh, and, and you can see these levels on. When we would have done this, would have been the second. Da, da, da. So yeah, around these sort of highs, you smash through that. Obviously, you can't necessarily put levels on above that haven't been traded. Uh, we then came back below. We took out uh, this uh, this next area, and, and then which was the two thousand dollar handle, just a bit above that as well. By the way, that went in quick succession. Uh, and then we came back to a previous sort of resistance level, 23rd of July, that got rejected, we pushed higher. The way we finished last week, you might be slightly more comfortable, but we're, for me, we're still in a, a sort of a range where it's 50-50 whether we go higher or not, but that would be a good decision area, line in the sand before whether we test the low last week again, or actually we push on. Above 1975, you're likely to see then the $2,000 handle, and above that, the all-time high. Below this area, this is where I think people would be looking at, say, the 8th of July high, 1831 on futures. That would be probably, if you're looking for a more longer-term position, uh, to get in around there. It's a tricky one on gold, I have to say, because if you're you know, a long, long-term investor, it's not what you want to see, but it's part and parcel. You know, If I go back to my S&P trade that I'm still in, you know, I didn't want to necessarily see price come down from what's this the high here 3231 down to 2935 you know that's uh 29 what's that 300 points if my maths is correct you know you don't want to see it but if you believe in it it's part of parcel the market correction is healthy uh, and you know if you believe in it that much you've been presented with an opportunity to get long or another one down at 1831 you know, this has been on a fantastic run. Fantastic run. Um, obviously, since that sort of low that we... The coronavirus low, should we say. Oil. A couple of people think it's it's coiling up for a move to the upside. A few people reckon this rejection uh, of our level here from the 2nd of March is key. It's telling. And actually, we're going to push lower. I, I, I think it's it's valid. If you're short, you're, you're in profit it's stop above the the 2nd of March and obviously which turns out to be the, the high of the 5th of August uh, you know above that area and it's gonna work now or it's not if you're thinking of the long you shouldn't necessarily be in it because you would have got or you would have taken profit on that level which we've had marked up again from two weeks ago unchanged and yeah it, it might be that you're now stopped out on the rest of that position that's a winning trade or you're just waiting so above 43 43 then we'd be looking towards that $45 handle and also the low of the 5th of March uh, and then the 3rd of March high as well. Having a look at the, this is bringing another chart here on the weekly for, for oil. It's, uh, dare I say it, and I don't, wanna, I don't want the oil market to be listening to me because I feel it's going to uh, ruffle it up the wrong way. But what a boring market. Look at this. Look at the finishes here in the week. It's, it's done pretty much nothing. But it is a key level, isn't it? You know, here, putting this back on the weekly, we've got the, the 24th of December, that week. Remember when equities also bottomed out? Uh, that level here, close below this. We can't quite get a close of the week above that. Shows the significance. But if we do, I think $50 comes pretty easy to this. Uh, but yeah, key level. Would I want to be sure? If it was, it'd be uh, more of a be more of a slower, um, a shorter time frame trade is the word I'm looking for. Uh, the long, I think, we, yeah, we get 50 bucks uh, later this year. So, yeah, I'm still relatively confident in that. I just wouldn't be committing to a new long if not already in it. Uh, silver, obviously, that market has been on, on uh, a bit of a whirlwind this year. You can see, I mean, look at that week. To be fair to it, you know, it's a back above the... The line in the sand, the only level we have marked up for it, uh, so forgive me for that. But let's have a look at the, the daily chart to, to try and piece this together. Uh, if we were to come back down to the 23rd of July, 28th of July low, that's a key level. 
it rejected the previous sort of high area no real close below that so another key zone we're above the line of the sand i think looking at this you've now got a bit of a range just above where we're, we're trading the double top from thursday friday also the low from the 10th of august to monday back above that you'd imagine gold's also pushing on and then we'd be looking at the the multi-year high for silver dax just to finish it um loads up uh, when did we do this? It was the second, so second of August. So we push on. We, this makes me look like a genius, doesn't it? Back above the uh, the bottom part of that that sort of line of sand that we have, come back to test it, and it pushes on, uh, and all sort of horizontal lines have been respected. So good to see that. Uh, let's just remove those arrows. Uh, I guess the the line in the sand to the downside twelve and a half thousand you probably still keep that on just obviously bringing in these new lows as well this trend line break and also the FTSE had one similar I believe wouldn't have been welcome to bulls but again it's been a chance to get in lower down so bear that in mind on the S&P bear that in mind on the Nasdaq bear that in mind on the Dow is a dip still a buy equities I think the answer is yes uh, to the upside what needs to happen here it has to stay above 12 Set thousand seven five six. I'm just going to extend that uh, horizontal line, uh, the rectangle, I should say, just to bring that across. That's going to be so key. Look how well that's been respected. If that goes lower, then we probably get twelve and a half, and then it's another decision time. Uh, but yeah, if this holds. Then yeah, just keep a watch on those previous levels to the upside from last week. And also the high that we had back on the 21st of July. Should we, we get a further push, obviously trend line is a long way away, but you've got that low from the 21st of Feb, the Friday before the 24th as well. But market set up nicely. It's a shame it's in August is what I would say. So keep an eye on those trend lines on currencies. Equities, uh, while it didn't finish necessarily great on Friday, there's still some great levels to continue this overall uptrend. Oil. Keep an eye on that weekly level from way back when. Gold, there's still some solid support a bit below. If your overall uh, bias is still bullish, it's just one you've got to suck up, I think, from, from last week and, and believe in the, the bigger picture. Anyway, guys, hope all is well. I'll see you next weekend, uh, and I hope you have a great week ahead.